Send me Fez in, would you please? No co-host has ever said that before in the history of radio, but I would like my co-host in here. Slowly he comes around. There's the door opening, and there he is. Fez, I don't want to interrupt you, but I want you in here for a bit. Okay. What were you doing back there, watching the phone screeners? Basically, yeah. Keeping an eye on them? Trying to. Why? Well, just to make sure everything was at least running right from that side of it. When you're in there, do you stand behind the phone screeners and watch them type up? No. Mm. I'm on the board. I see. Uh, George, you're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, I just want to know how Fez can justify making the money he has, and it's been an hour, and he's just getting on now, even if he says anything. The Lord knocked the ball out of his hands. Well, you guys are all great. I just want to tell you that, except for Fez, man. He used to be great. He used to be the best one on the radio. Now he's just, man, I'd like he, to see him come back, man. I'd like to see him come back. He's going to come back. He's going to come back in a big, big way. Did you drink over the weekend, Fez? Nope, I didn't have one drink. Take any pills? Nope, I really wanted to take the pills on the plane. I mean, badly I wanted to. And just stay, you know, stayed away from them. Do you still have I didn't the, e the pills? I still have them, but what I did was I didn't even pack them so that there was no, once I got to the airport, there was no way I was going to be able to take them. All right, so wait, the doctors give you the pills. Uh-huh. Then they tell you don't take the pills. Well, but I keep them. Yes. This is, uh, yeah, well, this flipping. is going through the psychologist right now where I decided if I know how the pills mess me up, not that it made any, you know, difference today, but, uh, yeah, I just didn't want to take the pills either because, you know, days afterwards, the, the, uh, weeping is just unstoppable. I miss the weeping. So, and just a, you know why I miss the weeping? Why is that? It was a sound. It was a sound. It was audio. He used to bring in a little audio on Mondays. Yeah. Um, here's uh, Chris. Chris, you're on the Run of Fez show. Hey, Fez. I just got a little uh, thing I noticed over your holiday uh, repeat that you played there. After listening to it, I think that your therapist is wrong about you drinking. You just need to stay drunk because that was the funniest I've ever heard you. Um, I noticed this on the best of. Hicks, you put the best ofs together. Yeah. And then, apparently, if I'm going to believe the emails I got, you play the part of the angry announcer. <laughs> well, yes, I... There's been... a fucking best of! <laughs> I wasn't even with the show at this point, so <laughs> I guess I have nothing to say about this. Here you go. Here's your best of coming up. Why do we... I've been roped into this. Why? Who is behind this? Rob? Rob Cross. Yeah. Uh, and we were able to dodge this Radio 101 thing for yeah. many years, but we can't seem to get out of it's it anymore. Battle of attrition. Um, Sean, Alabama, you're on a fez. Hey, when are we going to bring back the self-contained comedy bits? I love those. Yeah, you stopped doing self-contained comedy, fez? Yeah, um, I actually uh, have one today. Right, but you've stopped doing them is what the point was. Right, I hadn't been getting them on. I had been doing them, but not performing them on the air is what had happened. Um, what happened? I just got really, really wound up and nervous and, like, couldn't get myself to do it. Mm -hmm. Where I had them and then did just left them sitting there like a moron. So you're happy with the way everything's going? No, I'm not. No, not at all. So you feel like you're on a win streak? No, no. Opposite. Uh, 866 run zero fez 866 run zero fez Steven, you're on the Run of Fez show. Ronnie B., you're a genius. Uh, what hey, can I'm we do for you? I'm worried about Fez throwing those pills down the drain, that stuff getting in the water system. I'm thinking maybe if he just packages it all up in a big bundle and then uh, addresses it to me but put uh, to Leon Helms, and, uh, I'll, I'll, First I'll of all, it'd be Levon. It's Levon. <laughs> Get it fucking correct. And why do you send you when I'm here? I'll fucking take him off as his hands. I'll keep him safe. Uh, Dan, you're on the run of Fez show. Listen, uh, Fezzy, I got a question for you, and I've been wanting to ask you this for a long time. Okay. I don't, under 
I don't understand personally how you could ever be nervous about being on the air. I know you've been to listener parties. You know what scumbags we are. Get on, have fun, and just be yourself, man. We love you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate it, too. Hex, what about you? It's appreciated. We all appreciate it. Yeah, it's just, uh, I'm sorry, it's just a locking up thing. What is? When, when I freeze up in here. I understand all of that, that it's just conversation and I still end Should up me and Hicks blow leave? It. No, that's okay. Please don't. Would that help, though? No, it wouldn't. Not at all. What would you like to do? Um, I'm not sure. I'd like to not be like this. I know that much. I mean, in the show today, what would you like to do? Well, um, I had a horrible flight to Florida that I can tell you about. Because this That's is unusual. Normally, you come back and you love your flights. Yeah. And you're like, it was so smooth and the scenery was gorgeous. But this was something that had not even happened to me ever before. I've had turbulence, gotten nervous. I've had problems getting on the plane, thrown up on a plane, all those sort of things. This was a new one even on me. I end up sitting in the same row with a large golden retriever. Uh, apparently this was one of those service dogs, not a CNI dog, but a service dog that was being trained or being delivered. Mm -hmm. And I'm in a row of three. What do you mean by a service dog? Like uh, if, it, if someone like is in a wheelchair and needs a dog to help them. What? Right. So was the person in the wheelchair that you were in the row with? I, I don't understand. The, the receiver had a seat? No. No. There was me on the aisle. Mm -hmm. There was the handler, not a handicapped person, but a handler training service dogs uh -huh. in the middle. And then an elderly woman on the window. So these are the details to set up a story. Right. And then you drop the, and then there's a golden retriever sitting there. And we can't believe it. So the golden retriever is between the seats and the next row. Right. Yeah. And so three of you are sitting there, and where your feet are, a golden retriever is laying long way. Yes, is laid across us. A golden retriever is... A, did you get to play with him? No, I didn't want to play with him. Why not? Because I don't care for dogs, and I was... Oh, you're a cat man. I forgot. I'm scared to Jersey? death to get yes. on this plane. I haven't taken any pills, and now there is a dog crammed in the row of seats like it's some piece of giant um, luggage that won't fit under the seat. I've never heard of any shit like that in my life. It's never happened to me before. And I thought for sure, I saw the dog actually, I got on the plane as quickly as I could. I got in my seat. I got, you know, buckled in and just tried to sit there and calm myself down. I see the dog go down the aisle past me. And I'm like, wow, this dog isn't in a crate. And it's not, you know, it's not going to fit under the seat. It's not being stowed. And then I realize that the dog is now coming back to sit with me. And doesn't have its own seat, is not going to be buckled in, is just going to lay across the feet. And you know there's no room there in the in between rows of seats. You barely, I've never heard of this before. You barely this have room. Like, this is like, normally I'm like, oh, Fez, you're making a big deal out of nothing. <laughs> this is fucking bizarre. But why not just sit and go, oh, I'm afraid to fly. At least I can play with this dog for a couple hours. No, because it was so, it was actually so distracting. I was trying to calm down. And you know me, even like when a flight attendant I comes. I know you, you're Fez. When a flight attendant comes by and taps you to say, do you want headphones or do you want a drink? What do you want to drink or whatever? I always jump. I jump whenever there's an announcement. Well, everybody that why was. Why you like ring the bell and go like this? Miss, there's a dog in here, and it's laying across my leg. Yeah, yeah, there was nowhere to go. And then everybody who was passing me to go to the, use the restroom had to stop, lean on my chair, which made me jump, and I must have heard, oh, what a beautiful boy, uh, about a hundred times. Um, it's nice, though. Yeah, I mean, that is like kind of the thing of like no one's used to seeing a dog up in the air. I mean, think of it. You're <laughs> up in the air and there's a fucking dog up there. 
It's kind of bizarre. It's it kind was of insane. And then the old lady on the window, she's in this black pantsuit, uh, and she is now covered <laughs> in, said hot. in blonde golden retriever hair. She's covered, and she's trying to keep the hair off of her. The trainer of this dog says, yeah, the airlines really should hand out limp brushes. Why? Funny. Because you, you're the only one traveling with a dog. As long as I've been flying, I've never seen a loose dog on a plane. Uh, John, you're on Ron and Fez. Yeah, did Fez have his glasses on when he saw this dog? I had my glasses on. It was a dog. I didn't think it was a former intern. Ryan, you're on the Ron and Fez show. Scruffy? Ron, was, uh, what's up, guys? Uh... Was this dog like a seeing eye dog? Was a person sitting next to you blind or anything? No, the person sitting next to me in the middle of the row with his dog. He booked a, you know, middle seat, knowing he's going to have a golden retriever with him. They said it was a service dog and not a seeing eye dog. Uh, Jeff, Mass, you're on Fez. Hey, how you doing? Uh, Fez, you should have stood up and did the Samuel Jackson line. I'm tired of these motherfucking dogs on this motherfucking plane. See That's you. not trying to bring comedy into this. Fez is a serious story. What are we going to do about the dogs taking over our airlines? Uh, Glenn, Nova Scotia. Yeah, Ronnie, uh, I just want to tell Fez he should have taken out his cock. The dog would have licked it. Um, a service dog. So this dog was going to pull someone's wheelchair when it got to Tampa. I guess so. Yeah, or they were teaching it how to be of service on a flight. Maybe that was what it was. How could you have not found out? You're in a two and a half hour flight. <laughs> a dog is at your feet. I would have known everything about that dog and all the hot chicks who came by to see that okay. dog. I was so ticked at that guy dragging a dog into the middle of a, of a very tight airline row. I didn't want anything to do with it. But your flight must have went by like a shot. I mean, it was, like, so distracting. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, it was distracting, like, when they brought out the snacks. And you I'm, should have ordered meat so you could feed the dog. Well, I'm trying... Any jerky? I'm trying to have my chips, and uh, the dog is looking up at me the whole time. Give him a chip. I'm not sharing my food with the dog. Come on, it's hungry. I'm not going to feed him there. I had his giant paws against on top of my feet the entire trip. It's adorable. Yeah. Then the dog decides he needs to resituate himself, so I'm catching a tail as he's turning around. Well, here's the thing. You, uh, you ever hear of turning lemons into lemonades? Mm-hmm. Dude, you got Kool-Aid brought to you. It, it was already <laughs> done. You got a dog to play with on the fucking plane. No one gets that. Why weren't you doing all kinds of jokes? Anybody got a Frisbee? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> It was a nightmare flight. I would have been like, where, boy, where? <laughs> I'd have taken him for a walk, got to know everybody. Hell yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And by the way, the dog needed to be walked. The dog, very gassy at 36,000 feet. The dog or you? It was the dog. Well, you take those pills, though, that make you fart. So. What pills? That wasn't the dog. All right, who put on the bad date of Fez's ferry flight? Uh, Larry, you're on running Fez. Hey, Ron. Hey, Pool Pump. Hey, Rick, so something doesn't add up with your story. If, if it was a handler with that dog, how come it wouldn't be in the baggage or cargo area? That's what I was wondering. Apparently, these dogs are allowed on the plane. Here's the thing well, who, who's when you're traveling, after it? particularly when you're a nervous person, right? You don't have to wonder. You can sit there and find out everything about that guy and his life, and then before you know it, the planes landed. I felt that if I had uh, acknowledged it or sat there and petted the dog or made conversation with the guy, that it was condoning his actions. Well, what do you mean condoning the actions? You're not the fucking Queen Elizabeth. Whether you like it or not, the dog was on the plane. You could figure out, hey, what kind of dogs get loud on planes? How did this happen? And before you know it, your flight changes. You know what I mean? The flight is down. And you're having a great time. Uh, Blake, you're on my face. Hey, Chief, you McTight ass. Why don't you get a first-class seat? How poor are you? Look, forget all that. Fez is buying us all hoagies. I don't want any of your fucking flight money coming into our hoagie fucking funds. Yeah. And beer. Have we decided whether we're getting kegs? I say keg. Well, I don't want it to go in the bathroom. <laughs> well, no, you just get a big bucket and you put ice around it. Oh, we can just get 12 packs or whatever. 
No, let's go keg. Good, because when this fucking thing goes out, I want everybody fucking on Fez. We just run across the street and get 12 packs. <laughs> oh, no, they'll be very happy with the uh, keg. Uh, Mark, you're on the Fez. What's up, buddies? Hey, so when are we going to find out that this is an Opie story from a couple of years ago? Oh, it better not be, Fez. I've never heard of this. I've never heard of that large of a dog being loose on a plane. You... I've never heard of a small dog being loose on a plane. Well, I've, I've been on planes with small dogs before. Like, people bring their dogs in and a... And a little thing and open it up. Uh, but the thing that you, you were telling, the way you were telling it, no, I've never seen that. Um, Anna, you're a runner, Fez. Hi, buddy. Hey, buddy girl. Um, oh, my gosh, Fez. I'm so excited to have another person in this world that's had the same experience. I sat next to a golden retriever, exactly the same kind of dog, from uh, Baltimore to uh, Vegas, all the way to Vegas. And it was exactly the same thing. They put the guy with the dog on. It was an FBI dog that was training to be a bomb-sniffing dog. So That'd you be put a good it, dog to have next to you on a plane. I thought it was the best seatmate to have. He was sweet. He didn't drool. He didn't Aww. do anything. He was very well-behaved. Now, Fez, you when it, you hear this, it's the same situation, right? Right, yes. <laughs> For you, it's the most <laughs> negative thing in the world. For her, it's the funnest. I thought it was absolutely awful, especially during drink service when the trainer said um, he asked for an extra cup. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> so next thing you know, there's the dog wants a drink. Come on. I know, but I'm hearing the slurp, slurp, slurp of this dog as it's nauseating so me. It's slurping it up. You don't like to I see a dog drinking on a plane? <laughs> no. For itself. It's gra the water's going everywhere. Oh. The slurp sound is disgusting. I know, I know water wasn't going anywhere. It's a trained dog. Yeah. It's a service dog. Um, all right, Anna. It's so Thanks, weird to buddy. hear people have the same thing and different things happen. Mark, you're on Fez. Hey, Fez. Uh, why That's didn't you just dog. tell the stewardess you weren't a dog lover and there's at least 100 people on the plane that would have loved to switch seats with you? I was a guy, I get nervous about to me that's like a bad luck thing on a plane to oh, switch seats. True. That is true. Where it's like if the plane goes down they're not going to be able to identify my body cuz I'm in the wrong seat. See, I think of the switch flights more like that. Like you Oh wanna, yeah. Yeah, you want to fucking switch flights you would like that, wouldn't you? You'd like to put me on the fucking suicide trip. Mm -hmm. This is a picture of the dog. This is exactly what the dog looked like even with the same um vest that it's wearing, service right. vest. If that dog was sitting next to me I would have called them Dootsy Baby or the King of the Dukes. I'm not sure which. What, what was his name? I didn't ask. How do you Come know? What, what I name did you give him? What's that? What name did you give him? Um, service Dog. Why wouldn't you call him Dootsy Baby or King of the Dukes? Because that dog looked like if all the Dukes got together, that dog would be the king. Yeah. Look at his Easily. sweet eyes. Look at how big he is. Yeah. Crammed it. Fucking grab him. Crammed into a okay. row of airline seats without his own seat. I like the fact that if Fez's plane cra crashes, he wants to be in his assigned seat. <laughs> to help identify the body. Um, here's Joe. Joe, you're in Fez. What's up, guys? Uh, I want to know why a fancy man like Fez Marie Watley is flying coach. He's a cheap fuck. <laughs> Bill, you're on running Fez. Hey, Ronnie, I'm just wondering which one had the worst flight experience, Fez or the dog? They both said the other one farted. That dog was nothing but dog gas. I don't know. But Once that, we got up there. But the way you're telling it, everybody on the flight loved Dukesy, baby, right? The king oh. of the Dukes. Oh, they couldn't get enough, it's so... King. So now not only that dog who <laughs> thinks he's king of the dukes. So I'm on the aisle and yes, everybody loves uh Dukesy baby. King of the Dukes? King of the Dukes, yes. And the dog is crowding the whole row. And now I've got people leaning over me to pet the dog. Now yeah. I'm extra crowded because I'm on the aisle and people are leaning in. But here's the whole point. You already don't like flying, right? Right. This is a nice distraction. This is totally different from every other flight that you're on. And you could have been thinking to yourself, hey, this is going to make a great story. How do I set up the details and then drop down that a dog was there so I don't 
mistell the story and get off to a, a wrong jump. Um, here is uh, Sean, your manifest. Hey, Ron, that was one of those new government homo sniffing dogs, and it didn't have far to look. Oh, oh sir, don't even start that. Uh, Sean, you're on Fez. Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Fez, I bet if that dog was queer, you wouldn't be bitching. I'm not into dogs in any sense of the word. I like my dog. We say to a human. Would you ever suck that lipstick dick? No! You sure? Hold on. For $10? No. 20 No. And nobody was looking? How much? Um... A hundred thousand? All right, so here's the thing. You do suck dog dick. Uh, we just haggle over price. That's the only fucking thing. Uh, the only thing that's keeping him from uh, sucking dog dick is the price. Oh, don't suck dog dick. Uh, Brian, you're in Fez. Hey, Ron. Hey, Fez. Hey, um, uh, Fez, uh, service dogs perform a very valuable service for people that you really need the help. And they uh, go through a very long training process before they're certified to do that. So they're not going to bother people. They're not going to attack people. They don't get this, you know, they're trained to uh, ignore distractions. Their only goal is to take care of the human that they're assigned to and make sure they get where they need to go safely. They're not a hazard of any kind at all. Yes, and this dog was not with a person that needed a service dog. He was oh, with his train. If it was a handicapped person who needed a dog. Handy capable person who needed their dog with them, that I could get. This dog was just being delivered or something. Right, to a handy capable person. Right. But that person was not on the plane. Right. Needing this dog's services. This dog could have been in a crate in a heated cargo bay. Oh. Dooksy baby? And that know. fucking down there? Fuck that. I can't stand the thought of it. How could a king travel that now, way? No, did anyone else bitch except for you? The only other person was the older woman in the black pants suit, who was I, very upset she was covered with blonde golden retriever hair. Um, yes, because no one else had to share a row with the giant dog. Here's uh, Joe, you're on Fez. Hey, I know they hand out peanuts, but Fezzy, if you asked what they have given you peanut butter, you could have made the best of the situation. Um, oh. I was not going to do that. Why not? Because the price wasn't there. Fez does have a price for dog sex. As much lower than expected. Because for that hundred thousand, mm -hmm. uh, if I could shoot it on video and then sell it as pervert radio host sucks a dog's dick, I'll get my money back fast. That's bank, baby. Come oh, yeah. on. <laughs> I'll make ten times that. I thought no one was gonna be looking. Well they won't be there with you. Yeah, at the time. I mean then people get to watch, right? Online? Uh, Mike, you're on the Run and Fez show. All right, let's go to Dave first. Dave. Hey, how's it going? Good. Hey, those uh, those dogs, you can just buy the vest online and take your dog anywhere with you. It's a big scam. How do we know they're not terrorists, Ted? Uh, Dan, you're on Run and Fez. Hey, the service dogs have to go out in public with the trainers because that's how they learn how to behave once they're delivered to the handicapped person. Well, then he should have gotten a seat Andy bought Cable. for him. You want a dog sitting in the seat? Where do you live? Cartoon World? That would have been... Fred, <laughs> just sitting here riding along. Fez, everything isn't a cartoon. It's an actual dog. It's not a person. Just because it's wearing a vest doesn't mean it should get a job and drive a car. No. Put the dog in a seat or somewhere else. See if it can lay down back by the stewardess station in the back of the plane. How come nobody else complained? No one else had to sit with it. Um, let's go over here to uh, John. John, you're on my Fez. Hey, Fezzy, uh, you know, training do when they're training dogs like that, they're, they're not supposed to let people pet them and stuff. Like, the trainer either was a lousy guy or he was doing a poor job, so... You should have just started throwing meaty elbows around that freaking aisle. Did people actually pet the dog? They were leaning in to uh, compliment him, and some were petting him. Hmm. Right, let's see some of the things that Queen Elizabeth tweeted to us. Did the dog fart himself awake? 
the dog was probably like, I can't believe I have to put my paws on this fag's feet. Hey, Queen Elizabeth, that one went a little far. I'm sure if the dog did spa- did bark, Queen Elizabeth would be able to interpret for us, the dog herself. Um, Crisco says, the saying that I dog is a service dog. Um, here's uh, Randy. Randy, you're my Fez. Hey, how you guys doing? Yeah. Hey, Fezzy, would you have had a problem if the person had a service hedgehog next to him? Uh, I probably wouldn't want to ride next to a hedgehog, but I think the hedgehog could fit under the seat. What would you rather ride next to in a plane? Service dog, service revolver. Um, I guess service dog. Why can't you be a little happier then? uh, You got the opportunity to have a dog to play with. I didn't want to play on... I had the worst flight. I was sitting uh, next to this hot chick with gigantic tits. <laughs> God worst. damn it, I hate flying. Anything that will make you distract it and make time go faster is a good thing. Um, here's uh, Mike. Mike and Marilyn, you're on the Hey, guys, quick question. And I mean this seriously because I don't know the answer to this. Is a blind guy responsible for cleaning up the proof of a C&I dog, because it seems to me he wouldn't know when it's taken a dog. Um, here's Robert. You're on a Fez. Yeah, Ronnie. Fez is one heart attack away from needing a service dog. I bet he'd change his tune then, wouldn't he? If I needed one, I wouldn't make sure it was laying across three people's feet on a plane. <laughs> what would you do? I would, tro- I would probably try and book at its own seat. Or this, maybe try to get the whole row. Here's my point. So it could lay down. In, in other hands, this would be a very funny fucking piece of material. Because I've never heard of this before. I've never but, seen it. But it falls back into this cranky, bitchy thing instead of an amusing, funny story to share. It should be fun. Um, East End Rob, you're on the Run of Fish show. Ronnie B, any way to get this uh, dog as a third mic on the show? It certainly seems to have uh, gotten Fez talking for the most. Uh, I think I've heard him talking six months. Might be good for the show. Uh, let's go over here to Bill in Boston. You're on a Fez. Hey, Fez, you said you saw an old lady in a pants with a Labrador Retriever hair on it. Were you looking in the mirror? That was not my pantsuit. Um... Let's uh, let's go over here to Dave. Dave, you're on a Fez. Fez, what would you have done if that dog was sitting in the seat next to you, just with his face right next to yours? That seems like it'd be a lot worse than it'd be behind your feet. No, because when it was down at the feet and the row was so closed off with Golden Retriever, it why, was... Why didn't you say this? Put the dog up in the chair and I'll lay down at everybody's feet. I wasn't going to lay on a filthy airline floor, airliner floor. Everything was filthy, huh? Oh, those floors are awful after a flight. Uh, Frank, you're on Fez. Hey, Ronnie, Fez keeps saying that he would buy the dog a seat if it was his, but that cheap bastard will barely buy his own seat. You think he's really going to buy one for a dog? Mm, that's true. Uh, Steve, you're on Fez. Hey, Ronnie, my brother-in-law, he's always trying to work an angle. He's got this Boston Terrier, and he got a prescription from his brother who's an MD, and it's, uh... He, it's a prescription that says the dog's a service dog. So now he goes to the airport, and instead of having to pay for the thing to fly in cargo, the dog sits on his lap. This guy doesn't have any problems or doesn't need a service dog. He's just uh, trying to work an angle and save the airfare. It's just like, of all the places to try to work angles, the airport doesn't seem that like good anymore. <laughs> seem like somehow you could go to jail for just the slightest amount of gimmicks.